Hi there, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect your FT Funnels account to your ConvertKit account or any other email service provider that you may already be using in addition to your FG Funnels. The example I'm gonna use is a lead magnet opt-in. So someone opts in for a lead magnet and you wanna have their data in ConvertKit as well so that you can email them from there too. Now, of course, it could be easy enough to just embed a ConvertKit form on your FG Funnels opt-in page, but that would mean that the data only ends up in your ConvertKit and not also in FG Funnels, which makes you miss out on a lot of the awesome things that FG Funnels can do. So that's why I use this process, the Zap, to connect FG Funnels to your ConvertKit account. So there's different elements to this, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to set this all up. But if you happen to have any questions or any follow-up questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below, as I'm a tech virtual assistant and love helping people with this. So just drop them and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. So the different elements are these. We're gonna use a form on FG Funnels that we're gonna embed on an opt-in page. Then we're gonna use a trigger inside FG Funnels that sends the data from FG Funnels to Zapier. In Zapier, we're gonna set up a Zap that then sends on that data to ConvertKit. So we're gonna start at the end actually at ConvertKit and set up a form in there that is where people will enter your ConvertKit account. So inside your ConvertKit account, we go to landing pages and forms and we click create new. We click form inline and I'm choosing the Claire one it doesn't really matter and here I'm going to click on the little plus sign and add a custom field so here on the right hand side I choose first name required I'm going to move it to the front and what's important here is to go to settings and then incentive right here and this has to do with single or double opt-in do you want people to directly end up on your email list, which would be single opt-in, or do you want to have them first confirm that they want to be on your list? And in that case, you would be using double opt-in. Now, of course, if they opt in through FG Funnels, they end up in your FG Funnels account anyway. And here, um, they only end up here if they confirm that they want to be on your list if you're using the double opt-in. And if you want to use the double opt-in, here's the email that you can change right here. But for now, I'm just going to not use that and hit save. If you have any questions around that, let me know. I have other videos explaining better um, how single and double opt-in work and what to think about in those cases. I'm going to name the form here at the top left. So I'm going to say lead magnets example. I'm going to do FGF lead magnet example. And I'm going to hit save. Now you don't need to worry at all about what this looks like right here. It's just a technical setup right here that can capture the data that we're gonna send from Zapier. So we head back to FG Funnels. And in here, we first need to set up that form. So we're gonna go to Marketing and then Form Builder. In here, you likely already see a couple of forms that come with the templates that you have in your account, or you can simply create a new form right here at the top right. I'm simply gonna copy the one for rustic because that's what i'm going to use as the example so i'm going to here on the little arrow click copy and i'm going to say fg f lead magnet example copy and we see that right here we click into it and here it's important that we change the fields here it says enter your name but it's actually a full name one and I want to use the first name one. And that has to do specifically with ConvertKit because that works with first name uh, settings and not with full name one. So I'm just gonna delete this one and use the first name, make it required, check that the email is required. It most likely already is because you know it's an opt-in form and you need their email. Um, so this is the setup right here. You, there's no save button, so just leave it as is. And make sure to remember the title of the form because we need that in a little bit. So right now we're gonna go to funnels and actually create the opt-in page. So I'm using the rustic example and I'm gonna clone it right here because I never wanna use the original because you don't want to lose that, um, you know, that setup. You always wanna be able to clone that again in the future. So I'm gonna name it this right here select the location and cloning the funnel. 
we'll find it right here at the top. We open it up and what we need is a squeeze page for the opt-in and then we actually need a thank you page. So you, you're going to need to adapt any of these pages to be a thank you page and make sure that it sits right after the squeeze page because the setting that I'm going to show you means that they'll get sent to the next step in the funnel. So we're clicking edit page right here. And here where it shows you the form, you're clicking into it. And here on the left hand side where it says form, we can now choose the one we just created FGF lead magnet example. And then the redirect action is going to be go next step, which means go to the next funnel step. You could also send them to a website URL, but in this case, I'm just using this. Now, what you choose here does not affect how this integration to ConvertKit works, so you can do whatever, but I'm just using this now as an example. Okay, I'm going to go back over to the main page. And the next thing that we're going to do is we go to triggers right here. We click add trigger and we give it a name. Just name it something that you'll remember what it is. <laughs> um, so a trigger basically means there is one thing here on the left that is triggering some actions. That's always just one thing. And the actions that should be performed as a result can be multiple. Now, in my example, it's just going to be one, but it could be multiple and you would list them right here. So first of all, which event should trigger this automation? So we need to make sure we're on FG funnels here and not Facebook. And the trigger is form submitted, but not just any form. It's the form that we just created the FGF lead magnet example and the action right here. Again, make sure we're on FG funnels is execute web hook. And now it's asking for a web hook URL and that is going to come from Zapier. So that's where we're going to go next. You log into your Zapier account and you click make a zap. Now what's important to know is that you can set up this zap on a free account, but in order to, for it to actually work, you need a paid account because it's using a premium uh, zap. Here, as you can see, webhooks by Zapier premium. But in order to set this up, you can just uh, be on a free account. You can even test it on a free account. But in order to actually use a Zap, you'll need a paid account. But I think the first paid plan is already enough to be able to use um, a couple of premium Zaps. So the trigger event here is catch hook. We click continue and then it shows this URL here. So we're copying that URL. We go back to FG funnels and paste that inside here and we click save at the top right. What's super important here is that where it says draft, you're going to click activate. So it shows active. Otherwise, of course, it's not going to work. Now, in order to set up the rest of the zap, we need some test data. So what we need to do now is go back to the funnels, back to the page we created, and we're going to open it not in edit mode, but in the regular mode. And we're going to submit some test data right here. There we go. So now it went to the next funnel step, which is that sales page, but you can easily make this into a regular thank you page, of course. So inside Zapier, we're now going to click save and continue and click test trigger. We see that email address and a name that I just used and we click continue. The action, so this is very similar to what happens in FG funnels. There's a trigger and there's the action. So here's the action. The result of the trigger is that we're going to connect to ConvertKit and we're going to subscribe them to a form. Continue. And now it wants to connect. To, it will ask you to connect to your um, ConvertKit account. Now, if it's if it's not yet connected inside Zapier. So inside your ConvertKit account, you click on your name and you click account settings. Now, I'm not going to show you that because it shows my API keys. Um, but in there, it will show an API key already. But if you use that one, it's not going to work. But there's also an area where it says secret API and then it says show. And if you click on that and then copy that API key, then it will work properly. And then you will return to this page right here and it will simply ask you to choose the account that you just connected and you click save and continue. 
And here is where we actually set up the action. So we're gonna choose the form that we created. So that was the FGF lead magnet example. Email, I'm going to click show all options. And this is the data that it gets from that webhook as it's called. So coming from FG Funnels into Zapier. So here we choose email, first name. I'm choosing first name, opt into sequence, long story, but this doesn't work this way anymore in ConvertKit. So we're just gonna say no, leave all these other fields. They'll probably look different on yours because they're custom fields uh, in my ConvertKit account. And then I'm gonna click save and continue. And here you see the data and we just do test and continue. And it's now going to send the data from FG Funnels through Zapier to ConvertKit. So now we can check in here under subscribers and we will see that this email address is now here in my ConvertKit account. So it's actually working. So that's super awesome. And now when I want to turn it on, it's going to tell me that I need a paid account, which I don't have currently, um, <laughs> but you need a paid account, like I told you, um, but then it's actually working. So that's it. And if you have any more questions, again, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Bye-bye.